Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibes for all year. And this one is called Geography Now Croatia. And there's another uh, place that I've always uh, wanted to check into, you know, see what go on with them and thing like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I ain't going to hold up all year there too long, you know. Like, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, go ahead and do it. Why not? Uh, I man going to keep pumping out these vibes here, you know, because I man want to learn as much as I could. I'm packing myself with information. And like I said, if something doesn't add up, comment down in the bottom there tell me your experience from your culture so like this is croatia there's some croatians going there and, and give me some vibes about their culture thing all right let's youtube and sim simmer yes game of thrones was filmed here it's time to learn geography now hey everyone i'm your host barbie we are back in europe and today we are going to discuss 101 dalmatian islands ha Actually, it's more like 580. But first. The flag of Croatia is a little bit more fun and jubilant than most flags because it has the iconic checker pattern in the center. First of all, the flag is a horizontal tricolor that utilizes the pan-Slavic colors of red, white, and blue in equally sized stripes. The blue stands for freedom and hope, the white stands for peace and unity, and the red stands for eh, the revolution and sacrifices. In the middle is the coat of arms with the iconic Shahovnica or the checkerboard shield pattern with red and white squares, sometimes referred to as the Czechi. Some will say that this is because long ago there were like two Croatia one was called Red Croatia, one was called White Croatia, with little evidence supporting that theory. There are five shields on top of the Czechi that form a crown above the Shahovnica, each one representing the historical regions of Croatia. The first one is for Croatia proper, with a crescent and a six-pointed star, Dubrovnik with two red stripes on a dark blue shield, Dalmatia with three crown leopard heads, Illustria with a golden goat with red hooves because, hey, why not? And finally, Slavonia with a six-pointed star, two silver stripes, and a pine marten running on a red field between his Silver stripes. Yeah, for such a small country, those five regions have had an impactful historical upbringing. Let's discuss more about that in. First off, before we jump in, you might hear a lot of other countries, specifically in the Slavic world, using the word Hrvatska referring to this country instead of Croatia to a lesser extent. It's kind of like that whole thing with Germany. Visa in Deutschland. Oh, you mean Germany? Alemán. Tisland. Niemce. Saksa. Nein! First off, Croatia is located on the western part of the Balkan Peninsula in southern Europe, bordered by Slovenia, Hungary, Serbia, hugging Bosnia and Herzegovina, giving them a small coast on the town of Neum, and just barely have a 10 mile or 16 kilometer wide border with Montenegro at the southern the most tip of the wow. country on the Adriatic Sea. The country is divided into 20 counties and the country's capital is Zagreb. Fun side note, the small Bosnian Herzegovinian port of Neum splits the country's Dalmatian coast, technically creating an exclave for the Dubrovnik Neretva area. They were thinking of building a bridge on the Pelishats Peninsula so the entire country would be navigable by road, but plans were canceled in 2012. Speaking of which, historically Croatia was divided into four general regions. You'll probably hear a lot about these if you go to Croatia. They are Croatia proper, Istria, Slavonia, and Dalmatia. Speaking of which, Dalmatian dogs are said to have origins in Dalmatia, hence Dalmatian. Okay, no more rabbit trails, we really need to get back on top. Now, of course, because of its complicated past that we really don't have a lot of time to discuss, Croatia has quite a few land and sea disputes, as well as enclaves and exclaves, but I'm just gonna list some of the most notable ones. The Bay of Piran, the Dragona River, the Sveta Gera, all that mess on the Mura and Drava rivers. Then we get to Serbia, and it looks like earphones that were just pulled out of your pocket. The funny thing is, nobody really pays much attention to these places, which is why when outsiders do, funny things happen. Back in 2015, a Czech guy came in and and self-proclaimed his own micronation called Liberland on the supposedly unclaimed island in the Danube. <laughs> he was totally arrested. But he wasn't the only one. Two other guys tried unsuccessfully to attempt the same thing on separate islands and failed. The country has over a thousand islands on the Adriatic Why? coast, even though only about 50 of them are inhabited. The largest ones being Kres and Kirk, which even though Croatia ranks... Ima imagine the, the gods just going somewhere and said, okay, that's mine. <laughs> make up a flag and stick there. I mean, I guess that's what we do. <laughs> but like, you're one guy, you know, to be just go to, ah, that island right there, that that's mine. I now name this bombastic land. <laughs> <laughs> 
just around 125 in country landmass, it's all the way up to spot 20 in coastline length. That's more than Sweden and South Africa combined. In your face, Mongolia! By the way, homework assignment, see if you can find this heart-shaped island off of Croatia's coast. Zagreb may be the capital, but people come here to see Pula, Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. The Croatian coast is acclaimed by many to be by far one of the most captivating places in the entire world to visit, Looks especially like it. to witness a sunset. Oh yeah, and Zadar has a strange thing called a sea organ that looks and sounds like this. Okay, let's talk about plants and animals and stuff now, shall we? Okay, so Croatia may be primarily known for its coast, however, that doesn't mean that there aren't any notable features inland. Although a lot of the land outside of urban centers is used for farming, Croatia still retains some Ooh. world-renowned nature zones and national parks. First of all, the country is kind of split along the Dinaric Alps that meander diagonally across the northwest regions, all the way to the south along the border of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The division kind of encapsulates the inner flatter areas that slope down into the Pannonian Basin where all the rivers like the mighty Danube flow. Because of this division, Croatia experiences quite a contrast in climate even though the country takes up a small area. Zagreb can be completely different from Dubrovnik at any given time. About half Dubrovnik of the entire country is good. made up of karst topography, which is basically another word for dissolved, cavey, limestoney ground that erodes into fascinating shapes and providing a network of sub- Basically, cavey area. Just like we studied in Bulgaria, Croatia is loaded with caves. It's not that hard to find them, and many of them are absolutely breathtaking. Caves like the Blue Grotto on Bishevo Island and the incredibly deep Velebit Caves that go down nearly 1,400 meters. Ah, uh, that's Cute. The one place that everyone in Croatia will proudly boast over will be the famous Plitvici National Park, which contains the Plitvici waterfalls and lakes, which is where the coolest music duo on the planet, Stephen Hauser and Luka Šulić, filmed their Mumford & Sons cover video. I can't believe I missed you guys like a month ago when you came into my town and did a concert. Urgh! Sorry, I love two cellos. They're a great band. What? I can like music. Croatia also has that small Georgievetsky desert and a wide range of wildlife such as bats, otters, elk, boar, martens, wolves, and that incredibly rare Eurasian lynx, the largest land cat in Europe that can be found here as well. The coast, though, once again, takes the center stage when it comes to Croatia's spotlight moment. Because of its islands and coast, Croatia has had a huge boost in tourism in the past two decades, an industry that outsiders didn't exactly have so access that, to prior I've to the seen, longest time. The reason why I've seen a lot of that, uh, those who are waterfalls like there, I've seen a lot of pictures of those. So that's where that is. See, when you think of... Uh, countries like that you think of cold and blustery and stuff like that and then you see like a nice sunshiny thing and you know it's there you know you know the sunshine shines there you know you, you, you know it but you know yeah like for instance i'll give you an example in london when you talk of london you think of rain and mist and you know just foggy and stuff like that but i'm sure the sun shines there at some point you know <laughs> But, you know, that's the picture you get in your head when you first, that's what those places are sort of known for when you come from the tropics and stuff. It's cold up there. You don't want to go up there. You're going to freeze to death. Why will be discussed in... Croatia has a really, really long history on who it is and how it got to where it is now. And I'm just going to summarize it in like eight seconds. Roman Empire, Kingdom, Subordinate, Empire State, Wars with Turkey, Yugoslavia 1, Nazi Puppet, Yugoslavia 2, Civil War, and finally, European Union member. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> You forgot the Illyrians! First of all, the country has about 4.5 million people and is actually one of the 30 or so countries experiencing a population decline. The country is made up almost entirely of ethnic Croats, around 91%. Serbs make up about 5% and the rest is a slew of other people groups, mostly Slavic, but toss in a few Italians, Jews, and why not some Chinese, and hey, you got Croatia. Now, like mentioned in the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode, pretty much everybody in the Slavic Balkan nations can understand each other, especially these four countries. The only difference is that these two write in the Cyrillic alphabet and these to write in the Latin alphabet. It's a little more difficult for these four countries to understand the remaining Baltic states, like Slovenes and Bulgarians and Macedonians. <gasps> I mean, the former Yugoslav Republic. Uh, just call them Macedonians. I don't know why you are going to I'm not even part of the other part of the world. Guys, can we get back to my episode? Shut, Shut up, Croatia. Croatia! Nonetheless, the funny thing is pretty much all Slavs, whether they're from Russia, Poland, or the Czech Republic, which by the way just changed its English name to Czechia, or the Balkan Slavs, can all pretty much hold a basic simple conversation with each other and get by if they speak really slow and articulate well. It would be like if a Jamaican guy tried to speak to a Singlish speaking guy. Behind the statue, the coffee shop with the boom boom? No, I see it's on the right side oh, of the statue. You, the statue, I'm gonna look behind. I'm gonna look the right, man. I'm gonna look the right. right. I'm gonna know what you said. Yeah, and, and that's interesting too because uh, like i'm from grenada 
but they speak a different type of English in Trinidad and they speak a different type of English in Barbados or the different accent. Now, we can generally understand each other. The only island that uh, I really can understand is Jamaicans because they speak their own little patois. And of course, the Haitians speak a totally different language there. Now, even when you go down to South America, each country there have different dialects of Spanish. And uh, when I was at the university here, I used to uh, produce a, a section, a Saturday section on the radio. And uh, that was called the international section. And I had uh, people from, let me see, it was Mexico, uh, Colombia, Puerto Rico, and I think there was a Peruvian in there. But they, they had dictionaries in there to help each other understand each other. It was really strange. And I don't know if they just did it as a joke or if it was really the way it is, but it's all different. You know what I mean? So depending on who colonized a place, you even have the different types of English, you know what I mean, spoken, or the different types of Spanish spoken. And I think it's all, a lot of it too, not so much in the Caribbean, but a lot of it too, depend on what uh, native people live there. Uh, their language sort of integrated into the colonizer's language. Hey boy, you said behind. Alama, no la. You know this is right, this is left. You're very simple. Uh, no, they're right, I... Okay, they're right. Okay. All you had to say is the right, not behind. Clear now. Yeah, la, clear already, la. Alama, give you right. simple instruction also, don't know. Because you are clear now. Okay, la, win already, la. Guys, that was Kevin and Layton. Give him a round of applause. What's up, guys? Another quick way you can tell the Slavic Balkan states apart is the denomination. Croats and Slovenes are predominantly Catholic, while Serbs and Montenegrins are typically Orthodox. Croatians love water polo and don't even get started on the whole Nikola Tesla thing. He was a Serb. But he was born here. But he was a Serb. But he was born here. <laughs> Essentially, Croatia went from the fall of Yugoslavia and socialism in the 90s and the civil war in the mid 90s to being labeled as the top travel destination by Lonely Planet in 2000. Look at that, man. Like Ooh, that's a beautiful Dude, picture. Paul, seriously, we gotta check our sources. You're making us look bad. Shut up, Brandon. I'm doing my best. Let's talk about Croatia's friends. <laughs> In order to understand Croatia's friends, you're gonna have to look at two things, business and religion. First of all, they're neighbors. When it comes to Serbia and Croatia, it's kind of like, Why Serbia, Croatia, I don't get it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Croatia and Serbia have a lot of historical beef, but they hate to kind of admit that they secretly are kind of a little bit totally attracted and hot for each other. Business and diplomacy is still very big between these two, and ultimately they still cooperate pretty well. I was told that typically they even give each other a lot of points in Eurovision or something like that, and that just proves it. Eurovision proves everything. Slovenia was like a good friend that still held a few grudges since Slovenia was the first to join the EU, and they originally vouched for Croatia, but then they were like, wait, before you get in, we gotta settle some disputes otherwise. I'm blocking you and they did and then it got messy and then it got fixed the end by default Croatia has an affinity for Catholic dominated countries like Italy Spain and Ireland especially the Irish since they kind of empathize with the whole struggle with the UK and they are totally fangirls of the Vatican when it comes to their best friends however they would probably say Germany and Poland Germany is a really close friend since they are kind of seen as like the promised land after so many Croatians moved in and made fortunes there Germans also love visiting and doing business without a doubt though Croatians love it when the Polish stop by they're like the best friend who lives far away but skypes every week and sees them twice a year. On top of that, Pope John Paul II was from Poland, who liked Croatia so much that he visited three times. In conclusion, Croatia is kind of like the surfer cousin of the Slavic countries. After all the drama subsided, he opened up a hotel and a tiki bar on the beach, got a tan, and was all like, What's up, world? Come take a vacation in Croatia. Stay tuned. Cuba is coming up next. Hey, John. You know, the, the, more, the more I watch these videos, the less ominous a lot of these places seem because i mean you hear these stories and stuff it's kind of like how africa is depicted like it's a bunch of starving big-bellied children with flies flying all over them you know and uh that's kind of like the picture you get of, of places you know uh, that's when people are telling you it from their own cultural perspective you know what i mean and uh it's, it's cool watching these videos and seeing a different side of everything you know what i mean seeing the human side of everything and it comes back to that again bro we got to see the human side i'm gonna put a link to this uh video in the description go check it out you know what i mean go check out this thing if you don't want me to if you don't want to have to 
deal with me talking. Go watch the whole thing. You know what I mean? And then check out what else is on there. Because they got some good vibe. You know what I'm saying and thing? But I know you all like hearing me talk, right? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I'll put that in the description there. And keep watching my stuff. Boom, bam, beam. Just click on that stuff and keep watching. Binge watch. Get your popcorn. Whatever your national uh, snack is, get it. You know what I mean? And something else too. I want to do foods from different countries. Like, not just a little touch here and a touch there. I want to uh, I want to do the different foods. The national, Like in my country, the national dish is oil dung. What's the national dish in that country? Well, you know, or the dishes in that country. Because we have several that we eat. You know, but the main one is the oil dung. But, comment down below. Tell me if that's a good idea to do. Because I really am. I'm interested in that. Because, you know, I consider myself like a foodie. Yeah, yeah, I cook all kind of stuff in here. I ain't no chef, but I cook up some stuff. Uh-huh. But anyway, man, take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.